Senator Franken. Uh, yes, I'm a member of the Minnesota DFL party, the party that the chairman invoked uh, at the beginning of this uh, hearing. Uh, charter schools are not the issue here. Minnesota is thoroughly in the mainstream. There are 37 states in this country that constitutionally prohibit the use of public school money for religious schools. So it is a DFL party in Minnesota, thank you very much, that is in the mainstream and not uh, our witness or uh, the chairman. Uh, Senator uh, Lieberman uh, mentioned proficiency in the NAEP uh, test. And it just reminded me of this. When I first got in the Senate in 2009, I, I had a round table of principals and one of the principals <laughs> in Minnesota, and he said, we, we think of the NCLB test as autopsies. And I knew exactly what he meant, because what he was saying is that they, the students take the test in late April. If they're lucky, they get them back in late June. The teachers can't use the results to inform their instruction. So I saw that in Minnesota, that in addition to the NCLB test, a lot of schools, majority of schools, were taking a computer adaptive test. A computer test so you get the results right away, and adaptive so that you can measure outside of grade level. And this is, uh, brings me to the issue of, of proficiency, which the uh, senator uh, uh, cited, versus growth. And I would like your, your views on uh, the relative advantage of measuring, uh, doing assessments, and using them to measure proficiency or to measure, measure growth. Well, thank you, Senator, for that question. Um, I think if, if I'm understanding your question correctly around proficiency, I would, I would also um, correlate it to competency and mastery so that you, each student is measured according to the um, advancement that they're making in each subject area. Well, that's growth. A, at, at, that's not proficiency. So in other words, the growth they're making is in growth. The proficiency is if an arbitrary reached, if standard. If they've reached a level, the proficiency is if they've reached a, a like third grade level for reading, et cetera. Is no, I'm talking about the debate between proficiency and growth yes. and what, what your thoughts are on them. Well, I was just asking to clarify then. Well, this is, this is a subject that is, has been debated in the education community for years. Indeed. And I've, I've advocated growth as the chairman and every member of this committee knows because with proficiency, uh, teachers uh, ignore the kids at the top mm -hmm. who are not gonna fall below proficiency and they ignore the kid at the bottom who no matter what they do will never get to proficiency. So I've been an advocate of growth. But it surprises me that you don't know this issue. And Mr. Chairman, I think this is a good reason for us to have more questions. Because this is a very important subject, education, our kids' education. And I think we're selling our kids short by not being able to have a debate on it. And I didn't know of any rule about this, uh, you know, everyone gets one question and one other senator gets a question. I don't know where that rule comes from. Well, I'll tell you where it comes from, uh, Senator Franken. It comes from the committee president and the way we treated President Obama's nominees, John King, and the way we treated Arne Duncan, and the way I was treated when I was a secretary. But and I'm going to apply, I'm apply, I'm applying questions. the same rules to them, uh, to, to Secretary DeVos, or, or who, to Mrs. DeVos. Well, I think we're selling our, our kids short by not being able to ask follow-up questions. And I was kind of uh, surprised, well, I'm not that surprised, that you did not know this issue. Mrs. DeVos, your family has a long history of supporting anti-LGBT causes, including donating millions of dollars to groups that push conversion therapy, the practice of trying to change someone's sexual orientation or gender identity. For example, you and your family have given over $10 million to Focus on the Family, an organization that currently states on its website that, quote, homosexual strugglers can and do change their sexual behavior and identity. Mrs. DeVos, conversion therapy has been widely discredited and rejected for decades by every mainstream medical and mental health organization as neither medically nor ethically appropriate. It has been shown to lead to depression, anxiety, drug use, homelessness, and suicide, particularly in LGBT youth. In fact, many of the leaders and founders of conversion therapy 
including both religious ministries and mental health professionals, have not only publicly renounced it, but have issued former, formal apologies for their work and how harmful it has been to the individuals involved. Mr. Chairman, I would ask that this be included in the record. It will be. Mrs. DeVos, do you still believe in conversion th therapy? Senator Franken, um, I've never believed in that. First of all, let me say I fully embrace equality and I believe in the innate value of every single human being and that all students, no matter their age, should be able to attend a school and feel safe and be free of discrimination. So let's start there. And let me just say that your characterization of contributions I don't think accurately reflects those of my family. Um, I don't. Well, you've been, I, I would hope that you wouldn't include other family members uh, beyond my core family. Well, in terms of throwing numbers around, you said that uh, student debt has increased by a thousand percent since nine hundred eighty percent in eight years. I'm sorry. Nine hundred and eighty percent. That's not. That's, that's just not so. It's increased 118% in the past eight mm. years. Well, so uh, I'm, I'm just asking, if you're challenging my figures, I would ask that you get your figures straight about education policy. And that's why we want more questions, because we want to know if this person that we are entrusting, may entrust to be the Secretary of Education, if she has the breadth and depth of knowledge that we would expect from someone who has that important, uh, that, that important job. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Franken. Um, I had as many disagreements with uh, Secretary King as you apparently do with Mrs. DeVos, and we asked this, we're, we're treating her in exactly the same way that we treated him. Um, and I think that's what I would call the golden rule. I, think I did not hear clear. one member of the committee asked to ask more questions. And here, virtually every member of the minority is asking to ask more questions. And that's a very substantial we, difference. We, we have, <laughs> because you've got a nominee of the, of the Republican Party, I, we're not going to treat a Republican nominee differently than we treat a Democratic nominee. We've had, we've had the same uh, we've had the same situation with both of President Obama's nominees. So we'll go, we'll go to the next. Chairman, I, I 